Electric scooters are a highly controversial topic. Some people see them as an easy way of getting from A to B. Low cost, low impact, emissions free, potentially a way of saving our towns and cities from the harmful effects of highly polluted fossil fuel powered vehicles. Other people see them as a menace, causing injury and potentially even death. I'm dying. Whenever a debate like this has two opposing factions, it's always a good idea to find the truth, not in emotion or conjecture, but in facts and data. The popularity of facts and evidence-based reporting has significantly declined in recent years, with people simply preferring to construct their own realities where they can live in blissful ignorance of things like research, science and experts. These people have a scientific term and it's f***ing imbeciles. So if you're not an imbecile, then please do carry on watching this video. If you are, then f***ity bye. <laughs> so here we go, strap in, get ready for a ride. When it comes to electric scooters, the headlines do seem to be quite negative. And remember folks, the British press, they have a long and rich history of brilliant, accurate reporting. The Daily Mail reported at the end of 2022 that e-scooter deaths had tripled in the last year. Tripled in capital letters, tripled. Thing is, right, if you scroll down that article just a little bit, you'll see that the number that they had actually tripled from is 12, up from four. That's 12 deaths in an entire year from people riding e-scooters in the UK. The Daily Mail also reports that there are one million electric scooters on UK roads. 12 deaths from one million scooters that are out there. That's a death rate per scooter of 0.0012. So even by the Daily Mail's reporting alone, e-scooters are incredibly safe. And it kind of feels like they're trying to make them sound like they're unsafe. They're doing a bad job of that. The thing is, I would be highly hypocritical if I only used Daily Mail data for this video. So we have to look further afield than just the UK. And there's a reason for that. If you visualize a race to use emissions-free vehicles as a sort of Formula One race, then countries like Spain, Germany, and France in Europe well, they're like the Mercedes and Red Bulls of the pack. The UK, we're a bit more like Caterham. We don't really even have a car in the race. And even if we did, it would be shit. So data from countries in Europe is incredibly useful when making decisions about scooter safety in the UK. And we do have comparable town planning, comparable infrastructure to many countries in the Europe in the Europe, in the EU, which makes that data more useful than data from the US, where town and country planning is a complete f***ing cluster f***. What are you guys doing over there? Seriously, sort it out. Thankfully, Micromobility for Europe, or MMFE, have just released the results of a year-long study into scooter usage in 29 countries in Europe. And this is from six shared scooter providers, uh, Voy, Lime, Dot, Bird, Tier, and Bolt. I knew I'd remember all of them. Virginity is cool, what up, what up? So there's six shared scooter companies and they have compiled all of their data from every country in Europe that they operate in and they've compiled a report on whether scooters are safe or whether they're deadly weapons of destruction as reported by the Daily Mail. This data is based on 240 million trips, which makes up over 460 million kilometers ridden. So there's a lot of data there and it includes data from countries like the UK, but also Germany, France, Spain, all of the big European names, even the little ones. As Scylla Black would say, that's a Laura Laura data. And, she <laughs> and she'd be right. This data is amazing. It's incredibly useful for the UK government to make informed decisions about whether or not to legalize e-scooters. But folks, before I give you the data, I am bound by YouTube law to do something very simple. If you're still watching this video at this point, I imagine you either have a, a seething hatred for me so strong that you're basically typing out a massively long incoherent comment without grammar and you're about to hit send on that, or you're enjoying the video. If you are enjoying the video, if you don't already subscribe to this channel, then please subscribe. It makes life so much easier for me and all of my colleagues because we get a little subscribe, it makes us happy. It's like a little hit of dopamine. It's like, keep on making these videos. People actually enjoy them. I need one more. If you are already a subscriber to this channel, then please do consider becoming a member. There's a little join button down there. And if you press that, you can sign up for a monthly fee of about two pounds. That's like the price of a Starbucks coffee. And it's also a lot better than a Starbucks coffee because Starbucks tastes like shit and you should stop drinking it. And for that monthly fee, you get a load of perks. You get early access to our videos, 24 hours before everybody else does. You also get a guaranteed reply to your comments. So you could write really horrible things about me and I would have to read it and reply. So some really good perks there. So either subscribe or join or write a really angry comment. 
I don't care which one it is, but please do one of them right now. Okay, moving on. Right, we're back in the room and listen up folks, because we have the headlines from the MMFE report. They are as follows. The risk of injury whilst riding a scooter is 5.1 injuries for every 1 million kilometers ridden. Fatality risk whilst riding an e-scooter is 0.015 deaths for every 1 million kilometers ridden. So that makes the fatality risk directly comparable and pretty much even to the fatality risk whilst riding a bicycle in the UK. In total, for the over 400 million kilometers ridden across 29 countries in 2021, there were a total of seven deaths related to shared e-scooters. Seven deaths out of 400 million kilometers ridden. This makes the fatality risk on scooters 20 times lower than if you're riding a moped. Meanwhile, somebody is killed or seriously injured every 16 minutes on roads in the UK, and the vast majority of these deaths and injuries directly involve a car. You monster! Uh, did you see the news? So really, what the data suggests is that scooters are no different to bicycles in their risk to the user, and scooters are very, very low risk to pedestrians. But I think MMFE have buried the lead. There's actually a really interesting snippet towards the end of their report, and I will quote from it now in German, which is the language of the PR man who emailed me back when I asked for the data. They report, in the study of all police reported road incidents across 93 European cities, the introduction of e-scooters increased, uh, I think French might be better actually, of e-scooters increased incidents incidents by eight, Am I cancelled yet? I'm off air. In a study of all police reported road incidents across 93 European cities, the introduction of e-scooters increased incidents by 8.2% in cities with below median cycling infrastructure, but it did not increase incidents in cities with above median infrastructure. This shows a simple fact. Electric scooters by themselves are not dangerous. We're back to the old guns don't kill people, rappers do thing here, right? Guns don't kill people, rappers do. I've seen it in a documentary on BBC Two. Electric scooters are just a vehicle that can be ridden in any way. It's really dependent on the user. You have bad cyclists, you have bad e-scooterists, you have bad drivers. Got the, the thing that's dangerous is poor infrastructure. Car drivers get annoyed by cyclists and electric scooters being in their way. I've been on both sides of that and I totally get it. What makes absolute sense is separating drivers from cyclists and electric scooter riders. If you do that, there is literally zero impact to incidents reported to the police in cities where this study has been run. I personally experience this every day in London. So my commute into work at the moment is on a segregated cycle superhighway for most of my ride in. But small portions of my journey, I have to share the road with car drivers and we're only separated by a little painted white line. And the only thing that markates it being a bike lane is a little white painting of a, a bicycle. And funnily enough, the little white painting of the bicycle doesn't actually do anything to stop car drivers from pulling out in front of me or performing dangerous overtakes before inevitably getting stuck at a red light or in traffic and looking like a right If the majority of my commute was like this, so I had to share the road, then I would frankly probably just get the bus because it's safer. And I feel very confident and comfortable riding a bike into work. So there are millions of people in London who are definitely choosing to get the bus or get on the tube because they don't feel like cycling is a safe option or they don't feel like riding a scooter is a safe option. The clear and present danger on roads are not 15 kilogram electric scooters or 10 kilogram bikes. It's obviously two ton cars or even bigger vehicles. That's not to say that cars can't be driven safely and responsibly. And it's not to say that some scooter riders don't ride like absolute Tell us how you really feel. But the data shows a simple truth, and it's that e-scooters are not the death traps that some mainstream press will have you believe they are, and something else. As infrastructure gets better in towns and cities, micromobility will become a safer and safer option. But there's also an educational curve. So between 2019 and 2021, MMFE reports that there was a 60% decrease in risk of injury whilst riding an electric scooter because people learn how to actually ride them in a safe manner and drivers learn how to drive around them in a safe manner. One thing I haven't mentioned in this video and I can already hear some people typing it in the comments is about the death rate of being in a car. So actually the death rate of being in a car compared to 
to riding a scooter is only about 20% of that of a scooter. So you are five times less likely to die when you're in a car than if you're riding a bicycle or an electric scooter. But the reverse is true if you're a pedestrian. You're a lot more likely to die as a result of a car than as a result of a scooter or a bicycle if you're a pedestrian. So this is about keeping everybody safe, not just the rider or driver of a vehicle. Only 285 injuries were caused by cyclists in the UK in 2020, whereas over 10,000 injuries were caused to pedestrians by car drivers. So as a pedestrian, you are 35 times more likely to be injured by a car than by a bike or a scooter. And this doesn't take into account the fact that one in five deaths globally is a direct cause of air pollution, some of which cars, lorries, traffic is a contributing factor. So it's not just a direct health crisis when your pedestrian is out on the road, it's also a health crisis for people who live in cities and breathe in dirty air from fossil fuel powered cars, lorries, vans, other stuff, buses, all of that shit. Okay, so until electric scooters are legalized, there is something you can do. You can ride an electric bike. They are legal in the UK. And if you're interested in one, then I've got a simple thing to ask you. This is a bit like the appeal that I did earlier. This time, I'm not asking you to subscribe. I'm not asking you to join. I'm not even asking you to leave an angry comment, although you are welcome to do that. All I want to say is if you are interested in buying an electric bike, or an electric scooter, then you can head on over to electroheads.com. Every single product that we review that gets a four or five star rating goes onto our shop. And with the code ELECTRO5, you can get 5% discount on any product as a little gift from me. So if you're in the market right now, head on over and just see what we've got on offer. If you are not, then that's the end of this shameless plug and pretty much the end of this video. Please let me know what you think. Do you hate scooters? Do you think that they're a menace? Are you one of those weird irrational people? Or do you listen to the data and think these could be a really good part of the solution for saving our towns and cities from noise pollution, literal toxic fume pollution, uh, I've malfunctioned. Basically what I'm saying is tell me what you think about electric scooters. Tell me what you think about electric bikes. Tell me what you think about um, the football on Friday night. Fred as a baby name. Is it good or is it bad? I don't know. Like a friend of mine wants to call their baby Fred. Like, where do you stand on that? Let's collect some data and let's let them know. Okay, Electroheads, thank you so much for watching. Clearly I have to be locked back up in my padded cell now and I will see you again soon. It's been an absolute, an absolute pleasure. <laughs>